back we come to Atlanta the Cleveland Indians buoyed by their victory in game five over Greg Maddox before a wild hometown crowd trying to force this World Series to its limit with a win tonight. The Atlanta Braves on the other hand hopeful of putting the finishing touches on the one achievement that has eluded them in their sustained run of excellence a World Series championship. Welcome to the architect. We're at the finish line game six in episode six. I'm Jim Powell along with the brains of our operation John Scherholz who is serving as the the voice of the architect himself as well as Bobby Cox and taking us through the strategies and the mindsets and the planning that went into the 1995 World Series championship for the Braves over the Cleveland Indians. It's three games to two. The Braves are up. The two teams are back in Atlanta. Day off in Atlanta, John. A uh, little chance to reflect. I'm sure the team worked out or did something around the stadium on the day off. But uh, what was the atmosphere like in the city of Atlanta right now? Well, it was, uh, it was a workout. It was, it was exciting. It was a little pensive, of course, because given the circumstances, uh, of the following day, what we were going to be facing and the Indians would be facing. But uh, we had great confidence for good reason in the, in the guy who was going to be our starting pitcher. And remember, at the beginning of this project, we talked about our outstanding starting pitching against the hitting of the Cleveland Indians. And that matchup comes to be in this next game. Here's the 2 2. Struck him out. Strikeout number eight for Glavin. This is the real Tom Glavin today. He has been masterful. A one hitter through eight. Tom Glavin pitching maybe the game of his life. Absolutely dominant out there uh, to the point where he had five no hit innings. And the game was nothing, nothing. Uh, the Braves weren't scoring either. It was a great pitcher's duel. And famously, Tom Glavin came back to the dugout after I think it was after the fifth inning, uh, his fifth inning of no hit ball, and started telling his teammates, just get me one run. I need one run. Just get me one. And it didn't take long before David Justice took care of it. 1-1 one, one pitch. A long drive to right. Ramirez turns to the track. She's gone. Dave Justice, all is forgiven in Atlanta. Bob, it's OK to talk the talk if you can walk the walk. <laughs> I thought the way Tommy was pitching I don't care how good the offense was of the Cleveland Indians, they weren't going to get a run off Tommy Glavin. I mean, however long he stayed out there, Indians weren't going to score. And uh, and he, he he demonstrated his competitive spirit, his will to win, the championship caliber player that he is. And and, and to David Justice's credit, he was he was uh, he had to win back the fans, and it was a tough time for him to do that because of some of the things he said, but. Um, when he hit that home run, I think a lot of forgiveness came his way by the, at least the 51,000 people in that ballpark that night, and I'm sure most of the, most of the Braves fans all, all around the country. The Indian left-hander, their sixth pitcher, he's come on now, and he'll face Polonia, who will bat for Glavin, trying to keep it a tidy one nothing ball game, and then in the top of the ninth, it'll be Wohlers out of the bullpen, facing Kenny Lofton, Omar Vizquel, Carlos Bayerga, and if anybody gets on, Albert Bell. And then you start counting down to the end of the game. It's one to nothing, it stays one to nothing. Tom Glavin comes to the plate in the bottom of the eighth inning. He's, he's scheduled to bat third in that inning. Nobody on two men out. He's pinch hit four, so he's out of the game. Did that surprise you or not? You know, it did a bit, but I should never be surprised by the managerial excellence and brilliance of our, of our Bobby Cox. He has an instinct about what to do, when to do it, who to do it with, and it usually succeeds. And that's why he is in the Hall of Fame as one of the great managers of the game, all-time managers of the game. And the stage is set for the night. Three outs away from the one thing they haven't achieved in half a decade. Well, Mark Wohlers comes out of the bullpen. I'm sure everybody was nervous. That's, that's obvious, nobody feels you feel good about your chances, but you can't be, you don't feel overconfident by any means. But did you have a gut feeling that this was going to end well? I wish I did, but I can't honestly say that I had any kind of feeling at all, except please, Lord, let us get three outs and no run score and win this thing. That was what I felt, and that was what I prayed. Lofton pops one up into foul territory, and Rafael Belliard ran about 200 yards to make a great catch to get that first out and keep Lofton with all that speed 
off the bases in a one nothing game. A blooper in foul ground. Belliard racing over. Backhanded grab. That was, in my opinion, the most critical play in all of the World Series. When Rafi made that great play against the, the nemesis of ours, Kenny Lofton, um, to keep him off the base, there was a sigh of relief all through that ballpark, I believe, and it certainly was for me, uh, that we kept this guy off the bases with a one-run lead, and, and uh, we won that game because of it. I think that play saved the entire World Series for us. I mean, we earned it. But he saved it with that play. Waller still had to get out Sorrento. He was trying to, I'm sure everybody's thinking, don't get to Bell. Don't get to Bell. Do not let Bell bat in this inning. And sure enough, he got Sorrento, and then he got Baerga to hit the ball pretty well to left center field. And we all know the catch by Marquise Grissom. Grissom. And the celebration began. One out away. Left center field. Grissom on the run. The team of the 90s has its world championship. It was beautiful. Uh, when that ball landed in Marquise's glove in left center field, uh, we're world champions, and uh, it was a glorious feeling. Still is to this day. This is a dream come true. Uh, we've worked so hard since 1991 to get to this this point. We came up short twice, and it, it is such a great feeling. I mean, it's everything that we dreamed of. It's everything that we worked so hard for, and uh, I just feel so good for our team, our organization, and um, it's just a wonderful feeling. I told somebody yesterday a perfect scenario would be for me to get the win, David to get a big hit, and Wallers to get the save, and it couldn't have worked out any better. Right now, this is the most incredible thing I've ever felt in my life. Uh, all us guys, we came a long way together. We've been through some tough times in this organization, but we pulled together and we finally accomplished a dream and a goal of ours that we set a long time ago. I had all of the faith in the world that we were going to be able to get to the World Series and win the World Series because of what I knew of the character of those players. And of course, our staff, our leadership staff, Bobby Cox and his coaching staff, and the work that our scouting department had done in it advance of our team, getting reports on all of the players up to date and up to speed so that we could change whatever reports uh, or approaches we had to to the players we were going to face, uh, to the work that our minor league department did bringing players up, prepared well to play in the major leagues and contribute. It was a key in 1995 that our team was filled with those caliber of players and human beings that wanted to compete and wanted to win wearing an Atlanta Braves jersey for the city of Atlanta. And, and it was well-earned and well-deserved. It was the quintessential championship season for the Atlanta Braves. Yes! 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 yes, yes, yes. The Atlanta Braves yes. have given you a championship! Do you feel that you all laid some groundwork that carried the Braves well past 95 that you and Bobby Cox would take pride in? The beginning of that run started in 91 when we reformed our team with the kind of winners and, and, and committed players and champion caliber players and they continued to grow and uh, impact the young players that came along. And that all that group grew and got better and got more competitive and got championship-like. And, and, it, and it just continued from 91 to 95 and onward from there. 13 in a row for Atlanta. 10,000 wins. Swing, high fly ball, built to right center. are going to the playoffs. It's a two-run bomb for Freddie Freeman. Back, 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 good! A grand slam! And the Braves will raise another banner over Atlanta. The Atlanta Braves are division champions again, kings of the East in 2019. It is never going to get old talking about the 95 Braves, and especially with a perspective like that from John Cherholtz. For John and all the folks who worked on this project, I'm Jim Powell. We'll see you next time.